And the hardest thing about being gay is Hmm. The hardest thing about being gay. I will be quite honest and I'll add the word, the hardest thing about being a gay Christian is always in the back of your mind wondering, am I going to go to hell? As confident as I am, and anybody will tell you that I am as transparent and as honest as possible. That's who I am. And though I am confident in God's love and I'm confident in God's grace and I'm confident in knowing that this is how God made me, because this has been pressed down in my head over and over and over again, it's a constant thought. Am I going to go to hell? And I think that is the hardest thing to get rid of to overcome um and people may pretend to be as strong as they you know can possibly be and don't have any doubts and most of we're all human right (laughs) um we all uh have our worries and our concerns um it's natural so i think that is the hardest thing um is is getting rid of that thought okay and how did your i I believe you did mention it but you did talk about your family. I don't know if you specifically talked about your parents, um, but how did your parent? What did your parents? Were, you said uh, most of your family and friends knew, but yeah. specifically with your parents, because that's typically who, at least the gay people that I know, that's the people that they really have the biggest challenge coming out and telling. Um, yeah. How was it for you with your parents? Were were they like, oh, okay, that's fine, yeah? Or was there a little tension there? How was that for you? Well, uh, I did it. um, Well, my my mother and my stepfather, well, (laughs) uh, do you remember LimeWire? Oh, yeah, LimeWire. The music. uh, You can download music. Movies and... (laughs) Well, I downloaded music, I downloaded movies, and I downloaded gay porn. Okay. So my uncle, um, at I guess he saw the downloads the first time and was like, it has to be a mistake, right? Because mm-hmm. I would delete it, but, you know, back then the computers had like the cash and all. I wasn't that uh-huh. technical as a kid. And they came up again. So he approached, he knew it was only could be me. He approached me. We talked about it. I actually didn't say much. Um, He just talked about, he didn't understand. And I don't know what this is all about. And he told my aunt who then told my mom and my mom and I talked about it. I had to be a Hello? Yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what just happened. Yeah. But yeah, you're saying that your uncle passed it to your aunt and then we we missed you. Yeah, my uncle passed it to my aunt, my aunt to my mom. Um and my we talked about it. Um I was about 14. I told her it was a phase, something I was going through, uh, you know, just exploring, whatever. Uh then a couple years late, not a couple years, but when I went to college went to a church. They, you know, wanted people to come up to be delivered. And so I went up to be delivered from homosexuality. I thought I was delivered. I came home and told my parents, Hey, I'm delivered from homosexuality, you know, not gay no more, et cetera. So it was something they knew I dealt with. Um, but they didn't know that I was going to eventually, you know, accept who I was and tell the world. father i'm sure he knows uh years years when i was younger he asked my sister was i gay i'm like well i didn't just ask me but anyway uh i haven't talked to him but i talked to my 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 biological father's side of the family first uh they're a little bit more liberal less religious 
and they kind of celebrated me. They popped bottles. They got up, clapped and cheered and gave me hugs. And my grandmother cried. She said, I don't know what that means, but I love you. <laughs> um, now my Who mother- gave you the most tension? Like when you, you say, use the term come out earlier. Like who gave you the biggest tension? Like almost maybe a fight or like beef or they just turned their back on you, but you really were their friend. You loved them. They were a loved one before. Uh, well, I've had, I've had, I've had friends, you know, turn away from me. We're not friends anymore. Uh, because told, of that. Because of that. Yeah. They told me it was wrong. Um, I was, I was going to hell and I knew better and they stopped talking to me. See, um, I don't get how people say you're going to hell. I, not just for gay, but that's just weird. It seems like a contradiction. It seems like telling someone they're going to hell is an automatic way for you to go to hell yourself. Just yeah. really, or there's like multiple heavens. Right. Like, what if they're wrong? Yeah. Right. And what if you're there and they're there? Like, mm-hmm. is there going to be a multiple heaven? Like, uh, that's the west side of heaven, or is it a north side, south side? Like, most that's people really weird. Know. Most people don't know. Um, so I've lost those friends and, you know, I love them still, but, uh, they're, they're, they're toxic for me. Uh, me and my mother, uh, had it out. Um, you know, we didn't speak for a long time and that's a hurt. long time. Uh, so I told them in November around Thanksgiving. Well, yeah, it was Thanksgiving. One of those Thanksgiving break news. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> And because I'm not home, I live in Miami, there in Philly. So okay. uh, I did it in person. And maybe we used to talk every day, sometimes multiple times a day. That went down to maybe once every three months. Hmm. Uh, and then she used to, one thing, my mom, she's tough, but she also, she loves her firstborn. And so uh, she would get try to get information from my sisters about me. Like, is he dating somebody? I'm like, why is she asking y'all? Why don't she ask? But, you know, she still could not not <laughs> my business and not be a mother. But we just didn't talk. And, and recently, um, you know, over the last maybe this year, our relationship has got much better. We talk. We're back on our regular regiment. Um, she'll bust jokes. Um, she'll still ask when you get married, um, you know, where's your wife, stuff like that. Um, but, uh, she is, uh, we're back, we're back to normal. Um, now when I, when I start dating and (laughs) publicly dating, I should say, we will see where that goes. Wait, you're not publicly dating right now. No, no. So you're in the scene. You're, are you, what did they say? Sing, uh, single and ready to mingle or you just like put you you just doing your dolo thing oh no i am i am uh as of recent um taking myself off the market okay but it won't be anything public um for folks to know just yet i'm very private in that regard um uh so yeah Okay, cool. but I was single and mingling um, for the past couple of years, but nothing public. No, I'm not trying to have people in and out. This boyfriend this week and this boyfriend the next week. I can't. It's too much. <laughs> mm. Was is it true? I I use you can't ever trust social media these days. But mm-hmm. was Donnie McClurkin gay at some point? Yes. Um, is he still gay or no? Oh, really? Really? My mother told me, if you don't have anything good to say, you just don't say it. No. Uh. <laughs> I, I love uh, Pastor Donnie's ministry. Uh, he was a great, I mean, I listened to all of his songs. Um, I've min- I have I used to mime in church. I've ministered to a lot of his songs. Um, you know, he, he wrote in his book about, you know, experiences he's had and he's delivered um uh i have my beliefs about 
deliverance. You know, you can change your actions, but what your heart desires um, is still there, right? Um, so I can't speak for him. Um, I can only go by what he says, and he says he is. So if that's what, if that, if that is the 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 truth that he would like to walk in, then that's his truth. Mm. Now, whether it's the truth, I don't know. Okay. See, that's, um, it's, it's very interesting because just looking at you from the naked eye, it, I wouldn't, if I just saw you walking down the street, I probably wouldn't think like, oh, that's, that guy's gay. Yeah, I get that a lot. Women still hit on me. Uh, I could probably still, I got this collar on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, could, I could bag a woman if I wanted to. Um, you know, I, I just was at, I, I attended Florida A&M, uh, just had our homecoming. Oh, uh, nice. And, you know, all the ladies still, you know, oh, you look so good, et cetera, et cetera. And even uh, my my lady friends who know that I'm fully gay, they'll tell me I, I still don't, wouldn't think you're gay. So, and I'm surprised. I'm like, I thought I wore, I thought I wore the colors on my chest. <laughs> nah, nah, you can't tell at all. Yeah. But that, that came with practice because I was very feminine as a child and I hung out with just women only um, until I realized that that wasn't the, if you didn't want to get beat up, then <laughs> don't act like a girl. And so I started masking uh, my femininity, you know, uh, with, with being a scholarly student. Like I didn't play sports, so I couldn't compete with guys that way. So I started competing with guys in the classroom and in debates and stuff like that and started hanging out with guys and, and learning the guy lingo. So it, 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 it's something that I've masked. Not to say that I am today. I like being a man. Um, I like being uh, a masculine man. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a feminine man. Be you. Uh, but I'm masculine. I'm a man. I don't wear makeup. I don't put on high heels. I don't want to dress as a woman. I like being a man. But again, there's nothing wrong with people who want to do that. That's just not me. Have you ever been in a fight with a gay, a gay guy? Mm-mm, I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. Okay. And I rely heavily on the police department. You know, that's considered, I just found out that's considered domestic abuse. If two gay guys are in a relationship and they get into a fight, that's considered domestic abuse. Absolutely. I didn't know that until like two weeks ago. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, men, I am, I am as drama free as possible and any and everybody. No, you get up. So you've been angry in a relationship. Oh, I've been angry. I've been angry and in, in my own space. But if you ask any and everybody who knows me, they say Ben is always smiling. I don't, I do not, unless I'm at a microphone, you know, telling off Donald Trump or something, I am, I am easy. So do you, are you the excited type of pastor? Like who? Yes. And, and, and the name, or are you just good evening? Um, open up your Bibles to, uh, yeah. Ecclesiastics I, I, chapter five, verse five. <laughs> did it say amen? <laughs> like what I have a pastor. I have, I have conversations, right? Okay. Uh, a lot of that, no judgment, but a lot of it is hype and theatrics. Um, Most, most times nothing's being said, right? If you really take out the excitement and break down, (laughs) all you said was the sun is shining and I'm falling out and rolling on the floor and you've not said anything. And actually there was a minister who had a breathing or asthma problem. I think it was Mahalia Jackson's father Mm. uh, or, or, or Aretha Franklin's father. Somebody's father was a preacher. And they had a breathing problem, and they would go and uh, and and, 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 and people started picking that up. See, I can't even do it. People started picking that up and using it in their preaching style when they're mimicking someone who had a health problem. No one preached like that before. <laughs> this guy, he had a whole health problem, and most people. Uh, and I said this a while ago to a group of people, I said a lot of the the ministers and the people who are supposed to be declaring God's goodness are missing the basic elements of God, which is love. And we're trying to be so deep and wonderful that we're, we get away from the elements. 
after I've screamed, after I've, you know, did all of that hooping and hollering, what are 